At the Bondi Clinic, little eight-week-old kitten Coco has arrived in the arms of his anxious owner, Robert. OK, so just explain what's happened. Um, the dog walker found her under our dining room table. Yep. It's got a V-leg. Yep. She was lying upside down with her head stuck between the legs of them. Wow, OK. And we don't know for how long. Yep. We left home at about nine, so yep. this was about half past 12, so... And so it could have been anywhere up to three hours. Yeah. My real fear is that she dies, and uh, I have to explain that to two kids that have gotten to really like her a lot. Well, don't really know what we'll do then. And when she was actually freed, what did she do? According to the dog walker, she collapsed. She yeah. went completely limp. And then when she put her down, she just couldn't walk. At first glance, Coco isn't in a good way. She's been wedged in that table leg for anywhere up to three hours. And my worry is that in the effort to try to free herself, she may have actually done more damage. When you have two bars pushing in the side of your neck, you can get a situation where either you have uh, all the blood going to your mm. brain but not being able to get back no. from it, yeah. or you have not enough blood going there in the first place. Yeah. Did she have fairly straight eyes before? Um, I don't know. The thing is, this left eye, mm -hmm is deviated off to the left, whereas the, the right one is in a normal position. Yeah. Look, structurally, the rest of her feels OK. To be honest, if you ignore what's happened to Coco today and ignore her age and just look at the symptoms she's showing, what we're looking at here are the classic signs of a stroke. I can feel a little heart racing quite quickly there at the moment. So what we need to do is just try to reverse this sort of semi-comatose state we've got at the moment. So. My feeling is that her brain's gone through some sort of shock there, yeah. um, which is now affecting the rest of her body. What I'd like to do is do two things. First of all, get her on some oxygen just okay. to help stabilise her, but also give her something for the shock, okay. something that's going to take away any swelling that she might have on her brain. My hope at the moment is that it's just exhaustion from her trying to free herself from that table leg. But the big concern is obviously she may have a serious brain injury. He's just really traumatised. Okay. What's, what's his name? Juice. Oh. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, 11-month-old Juice has been rushed in by his distraught owners after a shocking screwdriver attack by callous burglars. I just don't understand how something like this could happen to him. Like, he didn't deserve this. He probably just went up to them and jumped up and started licking them. He's so innocent. Oh. OK, so we're just going to lift him onto the table, OK? Dr Laura Musgrove is the first emergency vet on the scene. Good boy. Good boy. As I get up close, he's got lacerations all over his face and it looks like he's been stabbed in the eye. There's blood everywhere, there's blood on the inside of his collar. He looks awful, the owners are really upset. And honestly, I can't really see a lot to do with the eye because he's squinting, but it doesn't look good at a first glance. Come on, darling. It's all right. Poor little man. Distressed owners Meg and Todd are horrified at the sickening attack on their beloved Staffy. We think they've personally thrown juice. Juice has followed them into their house and he's startled them. And they've thrown juice into the wall. Yeah, and a massive hole in the wall with blood oh, through it still. Sweetie pie. It seems like they've hit his head against a door frame and there's blood all over the door frame. So it's just... I can't even comprehend. Sleep, eh? At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is giving little Coco oxygen to try to alleviate the effects of shock. Coco's body is essentially playing tricks on her. It's panicking, which means she's taking shallow breaths, and shallow breaths just aren't effective enough. The kitten has been found unresponsive after being found wedged in a table leg. She's taking deeper breaths there, which is good. 
the issue we have with shock is that it's essentially where the body starts to, to shut down. It panics and, and doesn't have a normal distribution of the blood supply and also the oxygen in that blood supply. The positive sign at the moment is that Coco is taking deeper breaths, which we will find a way to actually decrease the pressure on her brain and actually allow her to fight off the shock she's currently experiencing. So she's breathing a bit more easily there. I might just set up the x-ray and get a quick shot. In struggling to free herself, Coco could have injured her jugular, arteries, or worse still, her spinal cord. An x-ray will allow Chris to check whether the bone structure is still intact. X-ray! So I've just isolated that area around the neck that was actually stuck between those table legs. So what I'm looking for are any signs of any fractures or, or any areas of extra swelling that just shouldn't be there. All the critical things for survival are all in this one zone and they've all been crushed. So it gives you a great indication about why you're entitled to be so concerned. All our vertebrae are in place and we've got no little bony pieces coming off to the side there. So we've got no fractures. The only damage we must have in this neck region is soft tissue damage. My feeling is when those bars pressed in, it meant the blood flow was still able to get to the brain, but it just wasn't able to drain away through the veins. That meant, essentially, the blood pressure within the brain got really high. If that pressure inside of her skull has become too much, then there's always the risk she could have had a bleed, essentially had an aneurysm inside of her brain, and that could explain the signs we're seeing in her right now. All right, a bit more. With due stabilised and given pain relief, Laura now has the difficult task of talking to heartbroken owners Meg and Todd. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, good. OK, I'm Laura. I know we briefly met a little while ago yeah. and things were a little bit stressful. Um, OK, so first of all, I just want you to know he's OK. All right, so we've got him stabilised. I mean, I think he's very sore and probably in a little bit of shock from what's happened, OK? You know, if it is a screwdriver that's gone in. At this stage, we don't know how much damage it's done. We need to let things settle a little bit, but I guess the worst case thing is that he could end up losing that eye. OK, so what we'll do as a next step is we'll get our ophthalmologist to come and have a look at it and just see, you know, whether we can save it. OK? OK. Thank, Thank you. you. It's all right. I'm not sure Meg and Todd have been able to grasp exactly what I'm saying. I think they're still in shock from everything that's happened, and I'm not sure they understand that Juice could potentially lose his sight, and worst case scenario, he could lose that eye. Hey, Juice. Juice, look who's here. There you go. Juicy. Juicy. Take care, buddy. I hate seeing him, it's like, just... He's never, so helpless. Ever, ever cried yeah, like he's that. never made that noise before. So I just hope he settles a little bit. I feel really sorry for Meg and Todd. They've had a day from hell. Not only have they had their house robbed, they've now got to leave their beautiful boy here in hospital. I just really hope we can save that eye. Okay, guys. All, all good. Right, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, honestly, our pleasure. Come on. Oh. Okay. How are you feeling there? It was a play session that went wrong, wasn't it? At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is closely monitoring little Coco, the kitten found wedged in a table leg. The biggest concern I've got is that what Coco is essentially facing at the moment is a strangulation injury. By being stuck between those bars, pushing on the sides of her neck, the artery flow would have been strong enough to force blood up into her brain, but the vein being a lower blood pressure would have meant that it never drained out. So she could actually have had a massive pressure build up inside of her brain. If that has occurred, then there's always a risk of something like a stroke occurring, a bleed inside the brain. That's it. Coco has been given oxygen and anti-inflammatories. The next few hours are quite critical to see exactly how she recovers, because if it's simply been a matter of her being stuck for a little while, being a bit stressed and now becoming a bit exhausted as a result of that, then she'll begin to improve fairly quickly. Coco's owner, Robert, has been anxiously waiting for news. So she's just here, she's just on oxygen there. Yeah, she's, look, she's doing okay. 
the little kitten also has two other special visitors, Robert's daughter Kira hey. and friend Hello. Ariella. How are you going? So I'm Chris. Hi. Nice to meet you guys. So you've obviously heard what's happened. Yeah. So she's just resting here at the moment. You can see she's not too aware of what's going on around her at the moment. Mm -hmm. But what we're trying to work out is whether that's just because she's very tired because she's had a very big day or whether she may have actually done herself some damage. We're doing the best we can. I know she's doing the best she can as well. I promise you I'm not going to rest until we see some sort of sign of improvement from her. After seeing Coco's family this afternoon, clearly there is a lot of love for her out there and hopefully that does count for something. My wish is that over the next 12 hours or so, with some extra rest and with some more time for those drugs to take effect, she really does turn a corner. But at the moment, there's no way of knowing if that's going to happen. There's a lot of people at home that want you home as soon as possible. At SASH, emergency vet Dr Laura Musgrove has called in ophthalmologist Dr Alison Groth to look at Juice's horrific eye injury. Can we have a little look? Good boy. Is that a bit better? He's been stabbed in his eye with a screwdriver and other places on his face, but this eye really worries me because I'm not really sure whether whether he can see anything out of there, so... Wow. I'm hoping we can find out a little bit more and potentially save the eye, but, I mean, have you ever seen anything like that I've before? I've never seen anything Awful. like this before. Awful, isn't it, darling? It's horrible. If it's a pretty major injury for juice, the eye has been ruptured, some of the tissue from inside of the eye is coming out, and the eye does not respond to light at all. When I move my hand towards his face, he doesn't show any normal reflexes, which is why I'm worried that there is injury deeper within the eye. So, it's, I mean, it's not looking very good. Um, he, he's, he doesn't seem to have any vision in that eye. All right, well, we'll ultrasound to see whether there's any damage further within, and okay. I'll let you know how we go. OK, mister. Good luck. Good boy. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think Alison has the same fears as me, that there's a lot of swelling there. At the minute, we don't think he can see out of that eye, and so I think she's probably as worried as I am that he might end up losing that eye. It's a very collapsed eye, so it's very difficult to um, see what I'm doing. Poor guy. So this here is the retina. The retina should be lying right against the back of the globe, but it's become separated. And when the retina is not in its normal position, it doesn't work properly. And if the retina doesn't work, then there's not going to be any vision. It's really, really sad. Yeah, it doesn't look good. So the ultrasound confirmed the injury was really severe um, and the best thing for Juice is going to be to remove the eye. Ah, oh, poor puppy. Right, Coco. You're a funny little thing, aren't you? We might just use this chance while those eyes are open to have a look in there, just see what sort of response we're getting from the pupils. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is looking for any sign of improvement, however small, in little Coco. OK, yep, so we're getting a response there. If there's one thing that's worrying me, it's the fact that Coco still doesn't have much awareness of what's around her, and that's a, a really big hallmark of a brain injury. If there is one positive, it's the fact that her pupils are actually responding to the light but it's been six hours since the accident and she's still not really showing too many signs of awareness and is still in that semi-comatose state. I would have hoped by now that we'd be starting to turn a corner and be starting to see some more positive signs. But you have to remember that Coco's young and today has been a day like no other. Alright. Alright. That's it. Chris is now concerned about the eight-week-old's hydration levels. 
I mean, it seems strange that just a few hours ago we were worried about almost too much blood pressure and now we're trying to replace that fluid in her system to make sure she doesn't become dehydrated. So it's just the challenge of looking after small kittens. Things change very quickly with them. All right, so she's now going to stay well hydrated. She's got those drugs on board from before. I think we're probably okay to actually give her a cage to rest in now. Yeah, okay. Coco will spend the night under observation at the clinic. OK, Coco, welcome to your little hotel. So what we need to do is something you're very good at. Yeah, we're just sleeping. My hope is clearly that today has just been a massive day for her, and the reason she's so unresponsive is because she's simply exhausted. I'm not sure if I'm being too optimistic in thinking that, but hopefully with, say, 6, 12 hours, we'll start to see some more positive signs from her. See you later. Won't be too far away. Ah, poor puppy. At Sash, 11-month-old Juice is about to undergo surgery to remove his badly injured eye. We're done. I'm very happy with how it's gone, and I think he'll bounce back really well. Um, we've just got to take extra special care of that remaining eye. Boy. You brave boy. Come on. Here you go, Roxy, your new home. Tim Faulkner from the Australian Reptile Park is delivering an orphaned wombat to the Hunter Valley Zoo. It's your new home. Jase. Oh, morning, Timmy. How are you going? I'm good. Meet Roxy. Oh, this is the one you rung me about. What a little cutie. Is, mate. So I'm swamped. I've got another little wombat, koalas, kangaroos. Zoo owner Jason has offered to help Tim by adopting little Roxy take good care of her. She's been living in that? She has. That's a little pouch. All right, mate. Well, I might get one of the girls to come and grab her and get her set up and give her a feed and Dude. get her organised. No worries. Daisy. There you go. Daisy, meet Roxy. Oh, she's so cute. And she's tucked right in. <laughs> Thanks. You want no to get worries. her set up? Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Daisy. All good, mate. Thanks, Timmy. Thank you for that. Maybe you don't think that's it. Got a bit of a job for you. Oh, uh, what do you got? Uh, hey, a little one. Little? Just babies. Okay. Nothing to worry Last about. Last time you Nothing to worry about. Me up. Yeah, nah. We're all good. So exactly how big are these babies? Well, they're only 12 weeks old. 12 weeks? 12 weeks, yeah. Jeez. Tim's brought up a little baby wombat today, so we thought we'd share the experience of letting him work with one of our babies. All right, you ready for a challenge? Oh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Jace, <Just> truth. <laughs> it's camels. Great. What on earth are we going to do with camels? <laughs> All right, well, these guys can spit, kick, bite, and even squash you down with their front legs. Chase. So the plan today is to, to lead the cows into our holding yards, and then we're going to have to put the effort in to catch the calves by hand, and they're up for drenching, vaccination, and we have to put a hoarder on them today as well. <laughs> She's a bit harder to catch, that one. Yeah. You got your work cut out for you. So Jace introduces me to Alice, the stubborn one. <laughs> I've got to go in, try and grab the very short rope and walk her up to the yard. Hopefully, it's that easy. OK, I'll go back around. Jeez, I'm walking close to those legs. Very easy to want to walk in, isn't it? It is. You get too close, mate, and she could lash out. Yeah, she's not cooperating, Jace. No, nah, you're going to have to try and get her by surprise, mate, and grab that lead. If we don't get them all, we won't get them all in. Oh. Come on. Tim's really out of his comfort zone at the moment, so he deals with all his venomous snakes and all this other stuff, but half-ton camels, I don't think he's done this before. Come on. Hey. Got her. Oh, well done. OK. All right, so we're going to walk him up the arse. Hey. Walk up. Walk up. I'm not really sure what to do right now, Alice. Come on, this way. Please, Alice, you're not making me look very good. If they can lead the mothers to the yard, the babies will follow. But Tim's camel is holding up the plan. You got to try and bribe him with a bit of food, Timmy. No, I'm just smiling at him out now, mate. Little smile. Come on, Alice. With Tim, you know, we're good mates. So I'm setting him up to a degree. I've given him the hardest camel, and I'm not giving him any tips on all on how to move him. So we'll see how he pans out. Timmy, you going to take you much longer, mate? Come on, put that lip down. Oh, <laughs> was right up then. Come on, this way. Come on. Come on. Hello, my darling. How are you feeling today? Hey, how are we feeling, Johnny?
don't come out. Oh, let's have a little look. Hello, hello, hang on there. At SASH, it's been just 24 hours since American Staffy Juice had major surgery to remove his left eye. Come on then. Come on, juice this way. Good boy. After a brutal attack with a screwdriver left the 11-month-old critically injured, Juice has made a remarkable recovery. Juice, who's this? But before he can get the all clear to go home, Laura and intern Grace need to give him a final check. Man. Well, he's so much brighter, isn't he? He's been really comfortable. When Juice came in the other night, he was, you know, in shock. He was whimpering. His eye looked absolutely terrible. Oh, how does that feel to have your head back? Today, he is so much happier. He's definitely on the road to recovery, and I can't wait to send him home with Mom and Dad. Can I have a little look, my sweet? Yes. Oh, boy. It looks good. so good. This is all stitched up nicely. Yeah. Well, Juice. I think that looks great. You know what that means? Do you know what that means? We can go see Mum and Dad. For owners Meg and Todd, it's been a heartbreaking ordeal and they're anxious to see their brave boy. All we've been thinking about is being able to finally come and see him again. So, I, yeah, I just I don't even care what he looks like. I just want to bring him home. Come on, then. Come on. We're going to go see Mum and Dad. Who have we got out here? <gasps> Who's that? <laughs> Words cannot explain how happy I'm feeling right now. As soon as we saw Juice's face, with his tongue just hanging out, oh, it's the best feeling I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> hey, you glad to see Mum and Dad? <laughs> how much better does he look, hey? You're so happy. So happy. Laura has prescribed massive doses of TLC as Juice recovers with his relieved and doting owners at home. It looks like the operation was done a week ago and it was done yesterday. Like, it's amazing how Such a good job. tidy it is now and now it's just keeping it from getting infected and hopefully the hair will grow over it and he'll just have some tough little scars and a permanent wink. OK, Juice, come on then. Come this on. way. Thank you so much for everything. Come on, Juice. Come on. Come on, Juice. Home's this way. <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Sad. Juice experienced probably one of the most horrific attacks I've ever seen on a dog. And to actually come out of it how he has is brilliant. Yeah, he might have lost an eye, but he's going to go home with Megan Todd and he's going to go on to live a happy, normal life. Go. Good boy. I'm so happy. I'm so cute. Come on, Joyce. What did you do with that kitten that couldn't keep its eyes open? Where did she go? At the Bondi Clinic, overnight rest has seen a remarkable improvement in little Coco. What did you do with that kitten that couldn't keep its eyes open, huh? Well, first, look at Coco. I'm almost tempted to scan her microchip just to make sure this is the same kitten. And overall, it's chalk and cheese, isn't it? We're dealing with a different kitten this morning. You do see this with kittens. Their metabolic rate is so fast. Things move so quickly in their body that really, if you can give them half a reason to heal, quite often, they will take it. So if you can see it, I'm guessing, I'm going to do this, which I know you don't like. You're going to rinse up a bit, aren't you? Yeah, there we go, nice little blink. Pupils are constricting, it's good. It doesn't look like much, but for her to be seeing where I'm moving that white light around and eventually trying to swipe at it, that is the best sign we've seen from her in the last day. And now there's only one thing on the little battler's mind. <laughs> Thank you, I need that. Yeah, for patients that are as severely affected as Coco was, we usually withhold food. I use that a lot, yeah? But now, given the fact she's showing these signs of improvement, it's time to see just how hungry she is. Normally, kittens, they, they chew their food before they swallow it, not just inhale it. Don't want to talk right now? I think that's enough food for now. 
stomach of yours is bulging. It was hard not to get caught up in the emotion of yesterday when Coco's family came and visited. But now, the really positive thing is, I get to call them up and give them the good news. You said you would have to get better. And could you pull through for everyone and look what you've done. You just will keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah. Okay, come on. That's a girl. Walk up. There you go. Come on, little one. Come on, Alice. At the Hunter Valley Zoo, Tim has met his match with a stubborn camel. Come on, I'll just get you started. This way. The plan is to try to persuade the mothers up into the yard, and hopefully the babies will follow. But obstinate Alice has other ideas. Alice is eyeballing me. For a minute there, I thought we had a bit of a connection. But she is non-cooperative. Come on, Alice. I don't think they're going to go any further, mate. Might have to radio some of the boys and get them to come in behind and help push them on. Just move them up? Yep, I'll radio okay. them now. I'll just stay here. OK, good idea. <laughs> I'd love to say I'm warming to the camels, but I'm not. I can see they're full of character, but also full attitude. Everything I'm trying, not working. Howdy, boys. We need a hand. I might get you guys to scoot around behind this time, see if we can get these guys in the yards. The reinforcements have arrived. Whoop. You got to hang on at this point. Finally, the camels move into the yards, where the babies can be separated from their mothers. You coming, Timmy? I'm not tall enough, mate. She's ignoring me. That's a girl. In this confined area, the real danger now is there's no real room to move, so the camels can kick you nearly in every position you're in. OK, make it nice and quick, eh? Yep. Now's our chance there, now, mate. Yep. The team has to work fast on this agitated calf. Up we go. First putting on a halter, <laughs> and then vaccinating. Good. OK. Ready, guys? Yep. Done. It's noisy and it looks stressful for the calf, but it's not. It's very quick. There's not that much pressure on. The calf's crying for mum. That's what it wants. A bit of drench and then we can let this guy go. OK, mate, done? Yep. Done. All right. All right, we'll let this guy go. OK, straight out this way? Straight out that way, mate. So yep. we'll spin that ball around to your right. And let him run out. Go, go, go. You're free, buddy. One young bull down, one to go. One, one cow to go. And I'm shaky. And she's bigger. <sighs> OK, let's get it done. You're looking good, aren't you? At the Bondi yeah. Clinic, a miraculous turnaround in Coco's recovery means she's finally able to go home. Chris phoned me today and said she's much better. She was jumping around. She bit his finger. Yeah. Coco's excited family can't wait to be reunited with their extra special little girl. Last night at home was uh, very quiet. We gotten used to a little cat bouncing around. Uh, she's quite a nocturnal cat, so yeah. she usually wakes up at about 2 o'clock in the morning and goes for a run around the house. So it was um, odd not having her there. Hello, guys. Hi, Chris. Hi. How are you? Are you good? Good. Do you want to come with me? Yeah. I think everyone remembers their first pets and remembers just how much they meant to them. So I was never going to be the guy that had to tell those kids that Coco wasn't going home. So there's someone that's demanding an urgent meeting. <laughs> what do you think? Coco. What do you reckon? You're a pretty good judge. You know her pretty well. Yeah. How is she doing? She's purring. Yeah. She's better. So you're the vet here now. <laughs> so what do you think? Much better. Much better. Yeah. This isn't the Coco we saw yesterday, right? No. Yeah. She's made a big improvement overnight. Ultimately, she just needed some time to relax. Yeah. To rest. Yeah. 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 There's no doubt that the brain is by far and away the most complicated organ in the body, so it makes sense that it's going to take multiple days, even weeks, for Coco to re-establish those connections, those pathways that allow her to jump around, to leap around like a normal kitten does. So the big question for us, does she come home? You're pretty keen, right? Mm -hmm. This is where it becomes very hard for me, because 
How do I say no <laughs> to you guys? How about we make a deal? Okay. So she can go home. Yeah. But she can't play with you guys too rough. And I'm led to believe she may play with the dog. Dog, yeah. So you can't let her play with the dog for a few days. Yeah. yeah. So there's nothing more to do than hand her over. There we go, Tiki. She's all yours. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. As the owner of a kitten <laughs> that has a similar personality, I, I mean that when I say good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you. You're obviously going to have some good, very good times coming up. Okay. So, yeah. Lots of adventures. Yeah. The adventures of Coco. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I've got no doubt that this is the first of many adventures for Coco, but hopefully it is the most serious. And from here she does actually mature. She learns to behave just a little bit because there's that loving family that cares for her a lot. And I'm sure right now they can't imagine life without her. Okay, down she goes. She's a lot bigger than Same the other side one. again, you want the head? Yep, head up that end. At the Hunter Valley Zoo, uh, okay. it's time to treat the second camel. And this calf isn't happy. She needs to turn around and get a head face on that on, way. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right, okay. right, here we go, guys. <laughs> Tim and Jason have to fit the calf with a halter and then vaccinate. Right. In the neighbouring pen, the mothers are anxious to be reunited with their babies. We'll go the injection first, mate. Okay. Catch number two, and I'm in go mode. I'm feeling good. I want to get on with it now and let this second calf go, reunite them with mum. Now, bit of drench. OK, all done. Right. Step back a bit. OK. There we go. Oh. She was strong. See, so there's no other way really to handle them. No, no, You've no. You've got to get in here, get in close, get into the action and get the job done. Mate, full on. I thought we were yeah. looking at your new camels. Well, we were, up close. Oh, that's intense, mate. Calf number two, done. Hold her on, injected, drenched. Now we can go back in with Mum. Come in there. We'll let them settle for five minutes and then they can go back out. Yeah, they're ready to go. Ready to go? Oh, well, eh, mate? What are you doing? <laughs> you're going to get yeah, spit on yeah. through there? He's wondering what we're up to with the babies, I reckon. Yeah, okay, let's let him out. All right. One, two. Okay. Okay, here we go. I love having Tim here. It's good stirring him up. I love putting him out of his comfort zone and seeing the look on his face when we set him up for some of these quirky jobs. Air off. Woo! That quick? All went well. Oh, good morning, mate. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, thanks for the wombat and cup of tea. No worries. We'll get you back for the next crazy adventure. <sighs> Hello, Owen. Hello. Hey, Chris. How are you? How are you doing? I'm it's good. Very good to see you. Good to see Hello. You. Hi. How are you going? Good. I'm almost nervous to ask. Hi. Where is she? She is uh, hiding. She's hiding under there. And as for little Coco, she's finally recovered from her nasty fall a month ago and is back to her mischievous self. Oh, look at you! Butter wouldn't melt. When Coco went home, we were all very much aware of the fact it was going to be a long recovery. So I'm keen to see how she's changed. Wow. Oh, Ooh, a little yeah. miss, little I miss like sensitive. <laughs> Has she mellowed? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's uh, as uh, energetic and full of adventure as usual. Yeah. Started climbing everything in, in the house, up and down, wherever she can go. Loves the garden. Yeah. And loves climbing trees. <laughs> climbing trees now. Yeah. Coco loves heights. She climbs all over the house, climbs onto funny places. Uh, Coco's been stuck up a tree three times now and uh, requires somebody to climb the tree to go and fetch her and bring her down. So this is the famous or infamous table? It didn't come with the socks. The socks is the, the new safety feature wow. to, to keep her out. But that's where she got her head wedged down there and the socks are now there too so that she doesn't slip down and fall. But it seems so innocuous, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. if you look at that, you would never think that a cat would get their head stuck in, in that. But it just shows you, doesn't it, when they're so adventurous, just, yeah. anything's possible. 
trees, tables. Huh? And health-wise, how's she going? Fine. She's uh, picking up weight. Yeah. So normally, she's well, nearly doubled in weight since we've had her. Yeah. She's a little play with your neck here. Yeah. <laughs> it's feeling good. It's not catching anywhere. There's no yeah. resistance to that. The neck is moving nice and freely yeah. there. Importantly, those eyes are nice and open and, and certainly pointing straight ahead. ahead. Has she been clumsy at all since? She was, when she just came back, she was clumsy for quite a while. When she stood up, she'd just like, start walking full weather. Mm. But it, it, you know, every day, you can actually nearly by hour see yeah. the improvement coming through. I mean, it's interesting because what you describe is exactly what someone that has a brain, brain injury, injury has yeah. to go through, yeah. is, is essentially teaching themselves to, to learn to walk, learn to have that learn coordination back, again, yeah. and, and teaching the brain to, to function in a normal way. And, it shows you how serious it was yeah. for her. To see Coco today, it's so heartwarming to see how much she has recovered, how she is now back to normal, clearly enjoying home life. Yeah, it feels amazing. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.